Hello, hello. Today we're going to look at crosswinds and how to deal with them when landing. So a crosswind is when you have the wind blowing across the runway rather than along the length of the runway. This can make takeoffs and landings more difficult. There are two techniques that pilots use to cope and land safely with a crosswind. These are called crabbing and slipping. Let's look at crabbing first. So if we imagine that we're on approach to the runway and we have a crosswind blowing in this direction, the plane is going to drift sideways away from the runway. So what crabbing involves is turning the plane into the wind so that it drifts sideways in line with the runway. Think about previous videos where I've talked about wind correction. It's the same thing and like a crab, the plane will be moving sideways towards the runway, hence the name crabbing. Now the problem is we can't really land like this. If we do, the tyres will hit the runway at an angle and risk getting ripped sideways off the landing gear, which is obviously kind of bad. So just before touchdown, we need to decrab, which involves lining the plane up with the runway so we can land safely. So the technique in this example would be to fly sideways or crab down to the flare point, the point at which you lift the nose to slow the plane down that last little bit and make sure that the main wheels touch down first. As you flare the plane, add some rudder to bring the nose back in line with the runway. In this example, we would need to add right rudder. And then the third step would be to ever so slightly roll the plane into the wind to remain straight and touch down. If the wind is coming from the left, you need to drop the left wing. If it's coming from the right, you would drop the right wing. I cannot stress that this needs to be a very slight and gentle movement. If you roll the plane too far to one side or the other, you could lose control and cause the wing to strike the ground, or even the engine if you're flying a jet. So let's look at a quick example at good old Inverness Airport. I'll set the sim up so that the wind is blowing in from a direction of 010 at a speed of 20 knots, and we're going in for a landing on runway 5. Okay, so here we are on approach to Inverness, I'm just trying to get myself settled on the approach just now. So, um, as I said, we've got the wind coming in from the left, so once I uh, get lined up here, I'll start to kind of slowly push the plane into a, a crab to the left there. So I'll just trim it out just to make controlling a bit easier. Get the flaps out to slow us down. So, apart from not pointing at the runway, the approach will be pretty much normal. Um, you want to just make sure that you get the speed down, make sure you follow the glide slope, which I'm not doing just now. Um, and yeah, just kind of land, try and land or approach the runway as you normally would. As I said, the only difference is instead of pointing at the runway, we're actually pointing at the terminal buildings from Venice, which, uh, which is quite interesting. So we've got full flaps out at the moment. I'm just trying to bring ourselves back onto the glide slope there. But you can see, even though we're not pointing at the runway, we're still kind of flying directly towards it, which is the whole point of the crab and that kind of wind correction there. And because the wind's kind of coming from diagonally in front and not directly across the runway, it's actually reducing our ground speed as well. So you can see that um, well, we're going to end up touching down a bit slower than normal as well, which helps. So we'll just try and keep the uh, speed as normal. So what I'm going to do is when I touch down, uh, or when I reach the flare heights rather, I'm going to do what I would normally do for landing. So reduce the throttle to idle and lift the nose to flare. As I lift the nose, I'm going to put in some right rudder to get line the plane up with the runway and then roll the wings ever so slightly to the left and uh, touch down. And it'll be on the, re the, the left hand main wheel first and then the right hand, but it'll be just a very quick movement there. So you can see we're getting a bit low now, which is fine. Okay, so that's about flare height there. So throttle wide, lift the nose, right rudder, and then slightly roll the wings to the left. 
there we go, and touch down. And then once you touch down, you'll need a little bit of rudder to stop the plane from getting pushed to one side of the runway or the other. And that is a uh, D-crab for a crosswind landing. The other technique is called slipping, or more specifically, side slipping. This involves keeping the plane lined up with the runway much earlier on in the approach. Essentially it's the same control inputs that you would use for decrabbing, however you begin from a couple of miles out from the airport, fly straight down to the runway and land without any additional corrections. So the technique is pretty much the same. When you're a couple of miles out, transition from crabbing into slipping. To do this, you would use the ailerons to turn into the wind. Again, it's just a slight movement. Third step would be to use the rudder to control the direction of the nose, so you want to keep it in line with the runway. And then all you would do is simply hold these inputs, continue descending until you flare and land without changing your aileron or rudder input. So here's a live example of me slipping the plane to landing. Okay, so here I am again on approach, just uh, trying to get myself established here. Get down onto the glide slope height. There we go. So we're a few miles out just now. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to let the plane sort of naturally settle into this kind of crab motion there. And then what we'll do is we'll transition into a slip in a couple of seconds. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to roll the wings to the left first of all, into the wind, and then I'm going to push the right rudder across there. And it's going to be quite difficult because I'm flying with a joystick, so um, I might not be able to do this properly. But um, basically the idea is that what you do is you use the rudder and the ailerons to kind of control your approach there and keep the plane pointing straight at the runway and then the point at which you flare and touch down all you need to do is simply pull back on the stick and hold these inputs so you can see that we're we have the runway directly ahead of us so now we're kind of slipping sideways through the air as we approach the runway so I'm trying my best to just hold the rudder steady and kind of control sideways movement with the ailerons. As I said, it's quite difficult because I've only got a joystick, but if you've got a yoke and rudder pedals, then this should be a bit easier to coordinate there. But you can see the difference on approach. You know, we're pointing straight at the runway the whole way down. We're not, um, you know, we're not skewed off to one side. So just as before, this you would do just as kind of a standard landing. So once you reach the flare points, just reduce the throttle to idle, and then just simply pull back on the stick to lift the nose and touch down. And obviously keep your ailerons and rudder where they are. So that's about the flare there. So just simply lift up, keep the plane tilted over to one side, and there you go, that's a much more gentle touch down there. And then again, once you've touched down, you will still need a little bit of rudder control just to keep the plane in a straight line there. There isn't really any advantage of one technique over the other. Some pilots prefer crabbing so that the approach is a bit more straightforward. However, other pilots are more comfortable setting the plane up to land early on with slipping. But I'd recommend that you try both see which one you feel most comfortable with and stick with that. If you'd like to practice crosswind landings, you can incorporate them into regular circuit flying. That said, there's a couple of things to consider when flying circuits with a crosswind. So here's our circuit and let's say that we have the wind blowing in this direction again. After takeoff, the plane will want to drift away from the runway, so you need to be ready to correct for the wind straight after takeoff. 
as we make our first turn onto the crosswind leg, the wind will be blowing onto the front of the plane, which reduces our ground speed and reduces how much distance we cover on this leg. So you might need to think about flying a little longer to get a suitable distance away from the runway. As we turn onto the downwind leg, the wind will be trying to push us sideways again, so you need to account and correct that. Then, coming round to base, the wind will be behind us which will increase our ground speed, so you need to be ready to turn onto final a bit quicker than normal. And then of course from there, you're on final, ready to practice crabbing or slipping. I definitely recommend searching on YouTube for some real world crosswind landings so you can see these techniques being used on larger aircraft. Hopefully that explains how to deal with crosswind conditions on landing. In the next video we'll take a look at the various lights the aircraft have and what purpose they serve. Hope to see you there, many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.